Knockoff Nation, the boys are back. Danny and Briz here for a little Monday afternoon throwdown, uh, keeping with the uh, general theme of getting guests on with intriguing stories. Welcome this afternoon, I guess, uh, Patrick Buck. Yo, sorry to let you down, boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Just, yeah. Yeah, all, we, all you could come That's up with. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he is every bit of 6'3", like you know where that came from. We got... Uh, where do, we, where do we start with Paddy? He's a bit of a jack of all trades. In his uh, professional life, he applies his craft as a full-time firefighter up in uh, North Queensland. Dipped your toe in the water in a few bands as well. But yeah. an- another thing that uh, we w- really want to get uh, deep into with you is an experience that you've just had. And it's interesting to me because it's one of the main things that not everyone in their life will achieve. It would be a, a very small percentage of the human race will complete a marathon and you yourself have just done the Great Wall of China Marathon. Yeah, um, just back. What an experience. Um, so what's a, what's a full marathon for the, for the uneducated? Is it 40? 40, 42.2. 42.2 uh, Ks. Ks. Um, Holy shit. Yeah. Um, the way that the, I guess the tour mob sold it to us was uh, top five marathons in the world. And right. I've always wanted to pat myself on the back by doing one, and, and that was it. And... Um, Everyone was like, oh, yeah, man, um, so how many marathons you done? Oh, this is my first. Oh. Yeah, oh. Yeah, well, like I've, I've done 20, bro, and this is, this is up. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, true. I was on the Crazy. website today, actually, and it was it is listed as one of the top fives. That would be a big marketing ploy, but mm. it almost markets itself, an event like that, to be able mm. to go to the Great Wall. Uh, it must have been a hell of a sight. I want to know who – where did the idea come from to do it? You don't just – wake up in bed and go, I'm going to fucking do a marathon. It's something that you really have to prepare, prepare for. Uh, was it a group that did it together? Yeah, there was two other guys, um, two guys from Brizzy actually, uh, part of the martial arts school I'm affiliated with down here. Um, and like I've always wanted to do one and the guys are like, oh, well, because I, I do Kung Fu and that particular thing will, you know, we'll go to China as well and then everything sort of fell into place. And yeah, right. Bit of a spiritual experience for the boys and, um, yeah. It's got to be like, uh, it's almost like, you know, a marathon. I- I'm in the same boat as you, Briss. Like, I've never, long distance events don't uh, don't get my dick hard, that's for sure. But um, props to any- anyone who does because, um, shout out to Netflix again, but I've watched a whole bunch of like, uh, of these ultra marathons and, mm. and crazy like, you know, long distance endurance events and stuff like that. And what it really boils down to, it seems anyway, to, to, to an outsider is the, the mental toughness of it. Because, you know, you can, you can train to a certain level, but at a certain point, you know, when you're watching these docos and stuff, the body just kind of stops working, man. There's a, there's a point of diminishing returns where you could be as fit as you fucking like, but then the blisters just overcome you mm. and, uh, you know, the, the absolute like caloric deficit that you have to operate at the whole time, like... So, so man, fucking tell us about like you know the mental, the mental battle that was the forty two k. Yeah, it's uh, full props to uh, the men and women that do do that kind of stuff. Um, like I'm very, very much a, a green weekend warrior when it comes to that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, the big fitness community in the Isa, um, especially I guess Ironman, triathlon, all that sort of stuff, and I was just sort of very, very much so crawling my way along trying to. F- trying to f- figure out how do I do this, how mm, do I prepare mm. for it? Because I'm thinking, fuck, that's a lot to prepare for for that's not right. even half in, a day. In, yeah. in, in, the lead, in the lead up to it, it isn't like doing a bit of reading today to try and sort of educate myself on what you did go through. A lot of people said that the 42 kilometres that you do, chances are that's the first time you've ever had a crack at that distance. A lot, mm. of, a lot of the people leading up in the first one will do maybe 21Ks, mm. like do, do a half marathon mm. in, in preparation and then... On, on game day, you can sort of rise to the occasion or go the other way where they don't have enough Ks in their legs and that's where you see the people who are just seizing up with cramps and just shitting all over their own legs and oh, have yeah. lost full, bo- full bodily function. So Seeing guys running you... around with blood coming from the nipples and stuff. Like, really? Oh, really? Blood, blood well, from the nipples? Yeah, just chafe. Yeah. Just chafe. Weeping chafe. Mm. How'd you go over there? Um, I had a Venezuelan um, roommate. Um, e. Yes. E there. Yeah, so I like yeah, the how good these headphones, started. guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this thing on? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, and he um, he had, of all things, surfboard wax. He's like, oh, man, just put this between your legs and on your nipples. And I'll, like, I'll apply it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And afterwards, man, I felt great. Um, <laughs> nah, yeah, and 
So I did that, and there was surfboard uh, wax. Yeah. And See, I would have thought Vasa or something would have. Well, worked. that's what it was. I would have thought too, but that's what he had, and yeah. no chafe, and that's excellent. it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Wow, so yeah, in the lead up was. Your preparation similar to that where, you, you know, I'll go out and I'll do 5Ks of road work today, I'll wake up tomorrow, I'll do seven or... Is um, no, not so much. Um, when I finally committed to it, I, um, I guess, took, took in from the community um, back home, you know, what, what do I do? Mm. How do I do this? You know, what do I have to there, eat? There was other people that in in town that have completed these sort of things. Before. Oh yeah, yeah, all all sorts of like. There's some absolute weapons up there. Yeah, um, I guess being a being a fiery, it's kind of synonymous with people who are really into their their fitness and physical challenges and yeah, things. Yeah, well, like that's that, that's that, the so. romanticised view. Everybody has a fireys, right. definitely. But um, it's you know just just tapping into their knowledge. Guys have done ultra marathons and girls, mm. and you know doing the Ironmans and stuff. Uh, you know, how do I do this? How do I prepare? What worked for you? Um, I, I managed to get to 27K and then um, I had a problem with my knee. So I had pretty much a month-long taper, uh, which isn't ideal, but that's just the way it was. Mm. Um, and then I got over there and that was that. What uh, – you were there for a couple of days before? Yeah, so – Were you able to get a, a look at the course or as in the wall? Or? Yeah, so um, – we, we, we did. We had a few few days in uh, Beijing um, trekking around. Just and got, on the, that... got on the piss hard for four days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, but... Um... <laughs> huh? Huh? Allegedly. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So what's your, what's your listener de- demographic yeah. here, boys? Like... Yeah. <laughs> um, I can slather, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. We got over there and, and we did... Uh, did a lot of looking around, um, like all the, the must-dos, I guess, in Beijing, um, which was interesting because I had a very romanticised view of what China would be like, um, you know, all the ancient history, um, uh, communist state, all that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, so that was very much a culture shock. But um, And then two days prior, they took us out to the uh, to the wall and they said, oh, guys, just um, go for a bit of a walk over there and just familiarise yourself, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> and... So, which is just that first section, um, and uh, which is the part that you go over the wall itself, and um, I was fucked. <laughs> it, it, like, there's no easy way to say it. Like, yeah. and this well, is your like reconnaissance mission. Yeah, that... just doing a recce, and I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah. holy shit! And because they they drove us on the bus all to all the way to the top of the, I guess the first section, which is the first incline. Um, Walk your, you know, walk your way, take all your photos and stuff like that. And the next day, my legs were just, I was like, cool. Cool. Yeah. I was like, holy oh. shit, like, what have I done? Mm. I'm so out of my depth. But anyway, the rest is history. But yeah. Yep. Was, and so, what did uh, what did you end up completing it in? Uh, six hours and fifty minutes. Wow. Um, record. Oh, sorry. The winner did it in three hours and fifteen. Wow. Wow. Um, absolute, like, absolute machines doing it. 42.2. Mm. And so, for anybody who doesn't know, the Great Wall is like 21 kilometres, I believe. So, yeah. you sort of, um, from what I read today, you, you're running through villages and all sorts mm. of shit as well, doing the full full marathon. So, you get around a bit. Yeah. So, the first section is, the first and the last section of the marathon is the hardest. It's, uh, I think... Oh, you might have the stats there, but I think it's around about 600 and something metres of elevation, which doesn't really sound like much in retrospect, but um, it's just, there's no there's no gradient, like gradual, sorry, there's no gradual incline, it's just straight up, right. and then undulation, goats right. tracks, and then straight down. And, um, and stairs too, right? Yeah, and not just not just stairs, like, yeah, you know... No, no handrail on that bitch. Yeah, right. yeah, um, you'd have just like a little, a little, little, uh, little paver... And it might be a couple of inches thick on a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of an angle to, like, I don't know six or seven bricks on top of each mm. other. So you like a foot, to a foot and a half that you so you climbing up, climbing down. Right, right. Um, Fucking just broken ankle that. territory. Oh yeah, they like, had a lot of rescue personnel up there. Um, yeah, you no know, people. It was hot too. I think it was about 30, 38 degrees. Oh, Celsius. Yeah. Holy wow. shit! Wow. Mm. So it was just like home, which I guess is a, which was good, but. I mean, it, it was it was fucking hot. Mm, yeah. yeah, definitely. And yeah. the smog. Oh, holy shit. So you would have been training in Mount Isa though, right? Mm. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> fucking cutting There's your teeth a... in pretty tough conditions up yeah, there. For anyone exactly. that's like, or 
tens of thousands of international listeners, uh, North, <laughs> North <out>. Queensland. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just, yeah, yeah, shout out to Jay-Z and, and yeah, uh, Queen sure. B. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shout out to the uh, whole country yeah. of... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, somewhere really small. <laughs> That's the thing. Training up there in those conditions where it is 35 degrees, or like 100, 110 on the Fahrenheit scale, getting up to that sort of vicinity and just hot, hot as Haiti up there. So that, that has to help. But on... Uh, the night before the marathon, did mm-hmm. you did you follow any sort of nutritional plan? Where oh, look, we need to load up on sort oh. of X amount of stuff for that. No, um, no, not no. at all. Um, I was just went for some Chinese, man. Was fucking oh, oh no, <laughs> we, what, what do we work? Actually, what do we, had sixty-three we, yeah, 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 dumpling bar. Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah, man. I was just coming off my blood doping program. And, <laughs> yeah. um, like, the EPO yeah. did it. Oh, mate, the roids fucking yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of just right out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, have you had Gal on this program yet? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> soon, mate. yeah. he's waiting to retire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, we had um, um, Donut King. Solid. Yeah, some donuts. Breakfast of um, champs. Oh, I think I had uh, some pizza. Yeah. Yeah, and wow. I was thinking, oh, God. Really embrace the culture over there then. <laughs> 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 fucking hell. Yeah. Went you to Mackey's, to... man. It was fucking mad, <laughs> man. Street food, yeah, yeah man. Like half a kilo of goat's yeah, testicles. Yeah, to no. uh, America <laughs> town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> the funny thing is, though, from um, from like those documentaries that I've watched and stuff like that, it's not you're not trying to eat nutritious food. Like when they when these guys reach their pit stop or whatever, and they've mm. got a fucking two minute window in order to max out on calories. It's like they're running for literally like sixty hours straight or whatever in some of these ultra marathons, yeah. and they'll stop and they'll have fucking coke and noodles and yeah. and like just the most sort of like calorically dense yeah, you need the junk sh- that you sugars can really and stuff think. like that yeah. your body just sucks it in like i had for um for the run i had um like gels chews um these little tabs and these yeah, <laughs> funnily what, enough what <laughs> <laughs> this this venezuelan guy yeah, Davis, he, he, oh, the venezuelan <laughs> are fucking hell Dude, what could possibly go when on? we were talking about it when it was happening it didn't seem too bad but now i listened yeah. to myself in these headphones yeah, yeah. His fucking <laughs> hair stood up in the Shit back of my neck man, yeah far <laughs> out right. But you, as you say, I've, I'm reading today, the human body is apparently only capable of having 32 kilometres worth of fuel mm, in it itself, right? itself yeah, before right. it starts eating away. And on the, I've got the map here of the, the actual course that you took. Mm. And they do have things scattered everywhere. Like Danny was saying, there's water, you can get energy drinks at some stations, bananas, energy gel, and first aid at all different stops. But mm. what sort of energy drink? A Red Bull fucking <laughs> pumping money into that sort of thing? Or? Yeah, man, I'd... Uh, well, I was I was very fortunate. Like uh, my mate Lance, he just give me a few things um, beforehand. Just get the <laughs> <way>. <laughs> no, they they just Lance had like the uh, yeah, 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 yeah. My connections, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. he didn't, didn't give you, you any headphones me, to bring home, did he? <laughs> didn't you see me roll in the Bentley? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it was uh, Gatorade, very watered down Gatorade, mm. and um, water gels. You uh, stayed. Uh, Three of you completed it together? Uh, two of us completed the full and yep. one did the half. Yeah. Right. Was it his intention to do the full? And he it was, was um, but just things with preparation and um, like he's a big boy too, uh, 120 kegs. Fuck, it's still um, having a crack good on him. And did uh, did the half, but um, it's just that, that incline on the wall. Mm. It's just, it yeah. kills you. Like it, there was a lot of guys and girls that were um, much more qualified marathoners than we were mm. that just... No, no, can't do it. They got to the 36k mark, which Ooh. is just before you That's get to the back onto the wall, or start. Sorry, back to the goat track to climb up, and um, they're, they're not too much. And so you say, like you speak collectively, like we did it together. But you obviously you're not waiting for each other. You all sort of ran no, your no. own way. So no, we did right. it together. Uh, it was, uh, okay. Well, that was part of our thing coming from the um, school that um, that sort of brotherhood thing, and that we'd right. do it together. We'd get through together, and that was very much so. I would think that um, definitely helped me get through. Like maybe I could have done it by myself, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, having having um, a mate there definitely helped me get it through. Get there, through it. there are times where you both needed reassurance. Like, did did you ever get to a point where you went, fuck? Like the doubt creeps in. Like, mm. fuck, I don't know if I have this. I no. To be honest, no. Uh, beforehand, definitely, I had that thing. Fuck, what am I doing? Mm. Um, but I don't know if it was it was ego, self belief, just having my mates there. Um, probably a combination, to be honest. Mm. Just thinking, fuck, how good is this? Yeah, you know, I'm in, I'm in a foreign country. I'm on, you know, on the wall. You know, one, one of, of the, the one oldest, of the, the ancient yeah. one, the great ancient wonders of the world. Mm. Um, 
just checking shit out. This is you know checking out real China. I always guess as real as I can it can be because a lot of it was very contrived. I guess that's mm. uh, that's another topic. But um, but yeah, no, it was great. The whole time we just you know you'd look down at your watch after you'd have a bit of a chat and and cruising along like oh shit, it's been fucking half an hour. Keeping a running pace predominantly, or just sort of getting yourself into a rhythm. Yeah, I think I ended up doing it. Oh, oh I couldn't. I can't remember. But it was um we'd 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 run then walk. Because like you'd have your little niggling injuries, or your mm. couple of times I had my muscles start to pack it in. I say, like, oh shit, I need to stop. Mm. Have a bit of a stretch, but yeah. keep going. So, any uh, any spectators, shit, pe- yeah. people and families people, there to people spur you on? Out. Yeah, that definitely uh, lots helps. Lots of police, um, all the villagers coming out, like kids can give you a high five and just absolutely like, don't break my rhythm, bra. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like heads in the game, yeah. like beats by Dre. Yeah. This one. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no time for that. Yeah. Like, I'm here working. Yeah. What was the feeling like when you uh, when you're finally done? When you finally finished? Yeah, it was. Um, I don't know. It's, I don't really remember. Um, the EPO def- would well and truly consume yeah. you at that fuck point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's euphoric as fuck, bro. <laughs> Shout out, Lance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, oh man, I just I was I was very happy. Um, I pumped the double shaka, that's for sure. Nice, and, um, nice. There was um, this. This Glamazon that handed me my um, uh, little congratulations you completed, yeah, your little medal. And I was like, oh, what's up? Yeah, <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Lance, yeah. you're out tonight, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, um, and that was that. And we had a couple of photos and had a feed and went back to the hotel. Early, uh, just wrecked after that? Or just Yeah, um, oh, definitely. Definitely, uh, absolutely cooked. Um, <laughs> no, nah, mate, went and did legs, yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. I went back to the start and did yeah. it all again, man. I had a, didn't had, really see the big deal. Had a tallie. Oh, like, had a, had a sleep on the way home, but I um, yeah. had a tallie and some and uh, some Pizza Hut. So, yeah. more. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, man, that is Best so Chinese good. cuisine, yeah. man. Yeah. The <laughs> food over there is amazing. Yeah, seriously, man. <laughs> that was seriously, we the, actually, the, we the have crust was different, yeah, man. It was, it was so <laughs> cheesy, like... <laughs> Uh, oh, that's hilarious! No, we did have some street food. Definitely got into the um the local delicacies, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, just that. How period. old were they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like there's no dogs or cats around. Eh? It's such a big city. <laughs> yeah. So what was like China? Like you said, it was c- quite contrived, and I've heard yeah. sort of like mixed things about it. And any time I've sort of um. You know, for me, like for the longest time, something that I've always spouted off is like if I'm going to go on a holiday, like tropical destinations, mm. like sitting on a paradisical beach, that's where I want to spend my mm. money sort of thing. And and big sort of like, I think in Asia they call them like megalopolises now. They're yeah, even sure. bigger than a metropolis sort of yeah. thing like uh, Beijing and Shanghai and stuff like that. Holds very little appeal for me in terms of a tourist destination, but mm. like... The I guess you alluded to it earlier, the romanticised idea of like rural China mm. and rural Japan and Asia and all, all these different sort of countries within Asia. Um, is is it like that? Is it like do you get this really sort of, you know, ancient true sense of, of country or is it is Not it quite – yeah. Um, I think the population of Beijing is about oh, 22 million maybe. Oh, uh, um, hard to fathom. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what really got me, um, which was so disheartening – just the smog, mm, yeah. like looking at directly at the sun in the middle of the day and like getting, I'm thinking, oh, geez, I'm going to get so sunburnt and not mm-hmm. getting sunburnt because you can't filter through. Yeah. Chemicals got you covered. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. Um, but yeah, very contrived. Um, didn't know what to expect going into a communist country. Like just all the things I guess we're very ignorant to or that we've been spoon mm. fed mm. through whatever medium. But um, definitely tour guides towing the party line. Still yeah. very hard. Um, yeah. No social media, uh, nothing affiliated with Google. Um, really? yeah. So you just like you go on Google and nothing comes. It just, up. just oh, it's, it's, could not. Page load, cannot so, be displayed. Yeah. 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 Same um, through North Korea and stuff like that is all uh, quite similar to that too. But mm. No facey, no Insta. Yeah. Like, um, what's the point, man? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with your life, man? Tweet, CCTV. Right? <laughs> CCTV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What could I do? Yeah. But, but um, yeah, it must be like it must be so strange though because we are just so used to living in a democratic society mm. that you know even like you, you go to whatever tourist destination basically and you still sort of whilst the culture is different the people are different you you still kind of living the same way of life whereas you go to a communist country it's a it's a whole different societal mm. way of living you know like a whole different philosophy behind life like, and, and you don't realize 
how how lucky you really do have it. I guess as um, mm. cliche as that sounds, until you go somewhere else, like um, when so we did went through Tiananmen Square and um, things like the Forbidden City um, tombs, uh, other palaces and things like that. And I'm thinking like you look at the pictures and like oh, it's just such a rich culture. Like you think of ancient Egypt, you know, it's three and a half thousand years of of history there, but. Mm. Nothing. I think when they had the Cultural Revolution in the sixties, they just destroyed everything, and so everything has just been completely rebuilt. And it's now it's just a big corporation, and right. this is what you get told, and this is what we this is what we show you. Um, even yeah, like I said before, the tour guide. So like we had a, an older tour guide, as in when I say older, she was thirty three, mm. and she uh, when we were in the square, she sort of all brought, she brought us all in. Oh. Um, yeah, uh, not too sure, but we know something definitely happened here. Um, in the 80s, lots of tourists asked, so that's that's why I'm just saying it now. Um, I think it was the early 80s, maybe. Um, yeah. Knowing very well in our own mind factually exactly what happened. Oh, uh, well, is... I'm, I couldn't tell you, to be, on, to be honest. Really? Um, or I or guess it has older, been eradicated from their history. Older population, for sure. Um, we, just to, to lead on from that, we had, for one day, we had a younger tour guide my age. And she said that it wasn't – what we saw was just um, was just a little bit hazy um, and be, that was from the, the dust and the sand that came from the, the Gobi Desert, which is in Mongolia, like a thousand kilometres away. Right. And we were just like, is this – Are you gaming me, Yeah, <laughs> like, and, you know, being the Aussies, sitting up, the backseat bandits in the bus, just <laughs> just <laughs> laughing and, yeah. and then they like, they stop the tour and like, Are you guys right? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, carry on. Yeah. Bizarre. It, it, different sort of mindset, isn't it, where free thinking and opinion out here mm. is essentially what we're doing right now. We're exactly. Putting, putting our own shit Exercising out on the airwaves. Exercising our rights right here. Exactly right. We can, on Monday yeah, night with a it. little bit of Captain Morgan's in we can my be, class. We can be opinionated as we like. But um, any intention of doing another one or moving into like an Iron Man? Yeah, or? for sure. There's um, like a – I don't have the bug to do the marathons, but – um. I'd definitely love to do the the outback, which is around Uluru. Oof. Um, and there's one I think they call it Polar Circle or Arctic mm. Circle one, which is Polar. in Greenland. Yeah, um, I saw that advertised on there as one of the uh, the big five. Mm, and so that that's pretty much it. I'd love to. I've got the got the itch to do tries for sure. Mm. Um, and see how we go. Buys and tries. Yep. <laughs> Chest and back. The following Beach. day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <Back. and> tent laundry. <laughs> The Australian Outback would be an awesome one. I'd, mm. I'd be tempted to sign up for that one. Yeah. You did a, uh, a triathlon at Julia Creek? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah, shout out to that's the... about That's pretty much Outback, isn't it? It's getting towards oh, that point. Barkley Highway. Yeah. Where's <laughs> Julia Creek? Up North Queensland one? Yeah, yeah. So there's a um, very, very big social community in the region. Um, I guess maybe because just because it's a remote, very remote area. Um, they have the Dirt and Dust Festival up there every year in Julia Creek. Um, which is about a, I think it's about three hour, three and a half hour drive from the Isa, so down the road. Mm. Um, and yeah, they have the rodeo there and races and the and the um and the triathlon. And it's 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 amazing because when I was living back here, just something that I wouldn't have lifted my finger at. And you know, if you said, oh, you know, Pat, you want to go to Julia Creek? I'm like, fuck, where's that? Yeah. That's um, it. Oh Welcome. yeah, a dirt and dust festival, man. Oh, okay, what's that? Oh. You know, oh, it's a triathlon, blah, blah, blah. What the fuck would I want to do that yeah, for? What, three and a half hours away to do a triathlon, man? Or, no, that's yeah, a, I know exactly the mindset. But, but that's mm. the community and people love doing it and they go out of their way to get around each other and um, I mean, just have a good time. And that's oh, – I've, I've fallen for it 100%. It's the best decision I ever made moving out there and I'm loving it. Excellent. Have you uh, seen anything of Fred Brophy <laughs> up in that region? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. For, um, all, for all the listeners, he's, the, uh, he's an Australian guy who travels around with a circus tent with a, an array of – Semi-professional and ex-professional boxers, mm. and local hard men, really? local hard men from the town, can roll up. Yeah, I want to fight that bloke over there. I reckon I can fucking throw down, and he'll oh, get him, he'll get him in a ring. No weigh-ins, no headgear, no nothing. Just right. get in, and he'll like yeah. they'll have a, they'll have a referee there, who'll traditional old pub style just just wave it off when he thinks the bloke's had enough. <laughs> and a, tra- a lot of the time in in the cases there, his well, these fighters that he's taken around are just old hard heads. Love getting on the piss mm. and. Mm. Quite often, fucking wipe out a lot of these local toughs. Like, because you go there, get on the piss. Yeah, I'll, I've had a few beers. I'll fucking go in there and throw down. And yeah. it's Fred Brophy, B R O P H Y, is his uh, 
is his organisation and still travels around doing it with a bit of success. But that yeah. was massive up in that. If community. you're a fan of uh, yeah, highly yeah. technical martial arts, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's master craftsman there. Like, fucking, you, you, he's been to town yeah. when you, you've yeah. been there. Yeah, no, the, he was at the uh, the um, rodeo, and I was a rodeo last year. Um, I don't know how many times he comes up. If that's the only one, but yeah, no, I went and checked it out. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Guys can cut some piss and just get yeah, got no yeah. idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's brutal. That's all I did. But as you say, yeah. man, you got these warriors that have got you know two, three hundred fights under their belt, and they just look like <laughs> just you know Kev from the pub mm. and yeah, just That's warriors. It. Yeah, yeah. For, like an old Roy. I'm Nel- 130 yeah. and 70. Mate, yeah. Pretty pretty much like it, Roy Nelson, like UFC heavyweight who's just signed over with Bellator, is a the guy who would be perfect to work for Fred Brophy, mm. just a. An iron chin who can give a punch and take one just as well. So it'd be a bunch of those sort of guys. There was an Australian story on that uh, Fred Brophy a oh, while back there? that uh, okay. that I became familiar with him. But yeah, he's still out there kicking. That's unreal. Yeah, definitely. And how long have you been up in the eyes for, man? Um, just on eighteen months now. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so that was just placement through work. Through yeah, the... they I got the call and they said, "Are you willing to get a man eyeser?" And yep, all right. When you want something bad enough, you're going to say yes. Mm. And to hear you say that it has come to fruition where it is the best thing you've ever done and you've mm. worked yourself into that sort of community up there, unreal, unbelievable. Do you, for anyone out there who were, you know, jam, jammed up in their career looking for someone else and thought, oh, geez, I, I wouldn't mind being a fireman, what is the general recruitment process for that? Is there, oh, you just. It, it, to be, well. I don't know how much help I could be. Like, it, it has changed since... You're trying um, to protect your I, own job, mate. Since right. I went through. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no it jobs, changed. fuck yeah. off. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> We're full, mate. Unlucky. <laughs> Should have got on while it was good. So, uh, <laughs> you play you played NRL, bro? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Rovers are looking for a uh, yeah, looking for some players. Get you in, yeah. Yeah. Um, these days, they're looking for all manner of sort of background, but it's... Um, for me, personally, it took me four and a half years... Uh, of from sort of getting the application, doing the exams, um, going through, yeah, and getting getting the nod. Then I went to um, went to the academy and was placed, sort of after that. But yeah, it was a long journey. I mean, you were for one were a part of it for mm, some somewhat of the way, and um, yeah. Is it? Uh, do you have a mandatory time period that you need to spend in Mount Isa? So they say, you know, in the military where it's okay, you're, you're based in Townsville now for the next four years or... Yeah, five years, five-year five year contract. Years. Yeah. But they stoked with that, obviously. Like, not uh, not worried about the length of time at all if I mean, you're loving oh, it. I mean, I was, obviously I was ap- like apprehensive. I mean, like, going to Mount Isa. You're from Brisbane originally. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the only connection I've ever had with that was my mum did her um, bush service for teaching out there. Um, she was stoked. Yep. Uh, but outside of that, it was just um, pick up and go. I mean, obviously, I, I was lucky. I didn't have to uproot a family um, mm. and go. But, um, yeah, I was out there. I was like, fuck, this is it's not it's not Brisbane. And it's like uh, I'm just reading here on Google. It's a population of 20,000, uh, urban population predicted. That's about right, yeah. Which is not many, which is a pretty fucking small little community. And that's mm. dispersed over over quite a large amount of land, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, there's there's a lot of cattle stations and stuff out there, and you other mining communities. But um, yeah, that sounds pretty fair. Like yeah. the, the the city itself. And What's you, it? sorry, you go ahead, Bruce. I was just going to ask what the the ratio is to closest sort of town to Mount Isa that I've been into is probably through Darwin, and similar up there was the pub, local pub scene was the worst sausage fest I've ever seen if you were mm. an eligible bachelor. Is that sort of the case Apparently in the Isla? everyone in Darwin goes to a gay club called Throb. Yeah, yeah, mate. <laughs> that's, that's, where, um, that's where all the chicks are because yeah, they're right. just sick of getting fucking yep. you like got, rough you got, ratios at everywhere got, else. Um, army bases, you got um, like all the gas plants and stuff like that up there. So just the, as you say, like... Shout the, out Throb. The only, yeah. Yeah, the only yeah, time the I've been there... <laughs> Mention uh, the knockoff at the door. Shout out to, yeah, yeah, to yeah, Sebastian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> hashtag the knockoff. Hashtag yeah. throb. At, at hung daddy. <laughs> at throb. <laughs> so, uh, um, what are we talking? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah the gay clubs. Yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is there is there a gay bar in Mount uh, Isa? Um, is there not official? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you do. <laughs> you do hear that. The thing about um, you know the Isa, um, there's no there's no women there, but that's that's not true. Mm. Um, 
Unless you're a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, it's – yeah, no, that's not true, not at all. Um, there's, there's a wide range of different different people. Obviously, it's a mining town mm. um, and there's a lot of mines in the region but you've got um, lots of nurses, coppers, um, uh, teachers, all, yep. all sorts of walks, everything. And the people that work within the town itself, obviously. So, yeah. And so you're like um – you, so your base completely out there. You've got mm. you've gotten yourself a little pad and stuff like that, and you set up out there for the next little while. You just come back, you know, on on leave and stuff yeah, like I'm that. On leave Otherwise, at the you're um, yeah. There's we've just got a, a house up there, um, just renting, um, set up for the next next whatever. Yeah, next yeah. yeah. Getting ready for Uluru. Yeah. When when would that be potentially? Oh. Um, Oh well, before before I come, or before I do my time, mm. before I do my time for sure, it's the best opportunity I'd probably have to do it out there, mm. amongst a lot of other things. And you talk about like uh, niggling injuries and stuff like that. Was mm. there any sort of like aftermath after the race that you would you know done any sort of lasting damage, or it was all fairly superficial? Yeah, You're obviously a young, fit guy, like muscular for sure. Um, I thought like I've had problems in the knees, um, which did give me a bit of custard, but. No, I was I was really surprised. We just paced ourselves really well yeah. and got through it. And do you want to shout out your uh, sneakers? What what uh, took you Asics. through the race? <laughs> Asics, Asics. Yeah, yeah. Asics, for sure. Yeah, uh, I can't even remember the brand, but yeah, <laughs> Keanu. <laughs> Let's say Keanu. Yeah, my, <laughs> Keanu. Yeah, Keanu. 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 Mister Reeves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, was he there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you look me look me up for uh, John Wick Three. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Fuck okay. that. I wonder what he's doing right now. Yeah. Fuck man. My um my hat goes off to those people, eh? Like uh I guess um I guess, you know, a, a, a marathon seems like, you know, an incomprehensible amount of fucking distance to me. But even the the like like I keep referring to those docos, like the ultra marathons and stuff, I think you've gotta you've gotta have like a different sort of like I don't know chemical makeup going on in your mind to be that motivated to to really try and smash one of those out because it's not, you know, it's not a it's not a team event where you've mm. got people sort of boosting you up. It's mm. this like crazy solo journey where it's just you against yourself. And and once like like there's this one called the the Barkley Marathons, I think, and it's run by this guy who's like obviously this real sort of eccentric. Um, like I want to say southern states of America mm. somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but basically like the the entry into the into the marathon is like it's some real random thing. Like you've got to bring a piece of old clothing, some sort of – it's like a something borrowed, something blue type of thing right. like to mm. en- enter into the race and then they sort of decide at their discretion if you're – Barkley marathon material and shit but the whole thing is designed to basically fuck with you and it's sort of like they call it like um they call it like rings or something like that where you basically have to run i think the whole thing is six rings but like rarely anyone ever makes it past two yeah right. there's only been like four people in the history of the race that have ever done six rings and it's like you sort of run one way and then you have to run the other way and um and this, uh, these, these two people finish it in the documentary or whatever, but I think by the end of it, they've been going for 60 hours straight, like no sleep, just continually going. And because and when they get back to, at the end of each ring, that's when they get a chance to refuel and they've got people like tending to their feet and mm. giving them food and whatever else. But these people are so driven, so motivated that they want to finish it or this in, in particular this one woman that wants to be like the fastest – she actually wanted to beat the male record because she'd absolutely fucking smashed the female record. But she was that motivated. She was like, I want to say like uh, in her 40s or whatever. And she was saying that, you know, this is my last my last chance to do this really. Like I can feel my body slowing up and, and the sort of toll that this, this kind of like lifestyle is taking. She was actually a physiotherapist. And she's like, as a physiotherapist, I know that this is terrible for your body. Like this is not a good like health and fitness thing or whatever but i think at the end of it she had been running for fucking 60 hours man and it's just like you you watch these people break down mentally along the way and Mm. and people that start with so much sort of pep and gusto and think oh this is the greatest thing ever but 
eventually that distance just takes it out of you, man, like, and, and just robs you of all of that, that spirit, you know. It's crazy that people can continue on past that mm. point. I think every, it's like everything, or for me anyway, it, it's relative. I mean, it, it all comes – well, for me, it all comes down to how badly do you want it. Obviously within reason mm. with, thing, with people like that. I mean, you could tear your hamstring and after 1K and that's it. But um, – uh, yeah, it, it's hard, it's really fucking hard work, but you know, um, I've really wanted to do it, mm. and um, there was you know nothing bar you know some kind of injury that was going to stop me from doing it. it. Was just like me getting into the into the service. Um, I mean, there was a lot of people that told me along the way, oh, I mean, maybe it's not for you. Mm. Why don't you why don't you fucking do something else, man? Like you know, mm. and, and which is which would be very comfortable, would be easy. Um, to walk a different path, but yeah. Do you, do you credit a lot of that mentality side of things to your work that you've done in martial arts? A hundred percent. Yep. Like, well, obviously, it's a lot to do with um the way I've been brought up, but um, yeah, for my journey as a martial artist, that's had a lot to do with it. When did that start? Were you a young fella? Yeah, uh, just after high school, so I would have been seventeen. Yep. And um, have, and have worked through. Kung Fu for a couple of years? Yeah, it'd be 10 years this year. Um, wow. I started off in boxing, um, did that for about oh, a year and a half, two years while and, you know, alongside um, Kung Fu and then I just can only have one master mm. to do something properly and, um, yeah, and that's the path of walks up to date. Any martial arts schools in Mount Isa that you can keep up training with or is it something that's on the... On uh, the... There are, there are for sure, um, but... Like I've sort of gotten to a point where I've, like I'm, I, I, I can instruct. Um, so I just do a lot of maintenance and I have my teacher down here who gives me things to do or to, things to think about and work on so I, I can just do, sort of do that. Um, I guess um, like, because I'm an avid listener of, of you boys up there as well. Knock um, off nation. Yeah, Shout out. Yeah, finally, finally got a fucking jersey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Long time listener, yeah, first time in Port. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are into the um, into the UFC, and that's just the, that's just the way it is um, from a from a teaching perspective, um, or at least from what I've been exposed to. Um, people a- outside of the UFC being so popular, people um, I, I think largely are in a society where people just want to be fucking good at it right away, straight away. Mm, and you yeah. see um, some of your super accomplished um, um, UFC practitioners, like, like I'm. I'm Oh, I couldn't like oh, who's someone super famous like Even GSP, like, yeah, GSP McGregor, um, all the all the yeah, elite level guys, these yep. guys. But you know whether or not you agree, you know it's it's bastardized or whatever. Like the, I really couldn't give a shit about that. But it's these guys have fucking put some serious years and years in. Like you know, and as they say with any of that stuff, it's muscle memory, and they didn't just wake up and fucking I'm a I'm a I'm, badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they, they, they might have had that mentality along mm. the way for sure, but um. That's like that, McGregor's uh, – like his, one of his famous quotes, and he has dozens of them by now. He's talking about, you know, this isn't talent. Like this is mm. obsession. Like yeah. This, this is what he lives in. I'd see – know exactly what you mean with like weekend warriors, you know, just rock, rock down to the gym. Here to bang, bro. I'm here to bang. Teach me how, teach me how to bang. And then yeah. not willing to take sort of that, that decade-plus pathway. And that's, uh, that's frustrating for all, uh, all the other guys who have who've, who've walked that path or, or part of it because I remember – You've, you, a couple of your mates have been on this who've, mm. who, who are trying to or applying their trade within that scene and yep. um, those guys have been fucking hurting and mm. doing their own injuries and all that sort of stuff and then you get someone come in, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, whatever age, oh, yeah, I want to fucking be like um, like Connor. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. Like oh, just another yeah, fucking ta- puppet. Yeah, yeah. take, yeah. A, <laughs> take oi, a number. Oi, oh, yeah. Gary, just come over here and just do some sparring yeah, uh, with thing yeah. and just lights them up and mm. just like just another fuck with like yeah, go yeah. away. Green lighting. Yeah. That's what they call that a lot of the mm. times in gyms over there where it's like yeah, you give him an extra couple. Sort yeah. Of well, I think it's that like it's that ten thousand hours thing or whatever. You can kind of apply to almost mm. anything. You know, exactly. you you need to be humble enough to be able to start at the bottom when it, whenever you're sort of undertaking a new endeavor. And I think what you're saying about you know naysayers is a really important thing as well because you know fucking Australia is guilty for it. Mm. Like a hundred percent is the tall poppy syndrome, and and people like people are so sort of protective of their own patch that mm. if you're doing something different to them, they want to try and sort of, I guess, like bring you, bring you down a peg so that sort of whatever they're doing 
like you know it's more is more justified to them whereas if you're if you're off on some sort of path and you know you know exactly where you're going then you don't you shouldn't really take on too many opinions like just have that conviction in in mm. where you're mm. heading and you know, because pe- people are going to be fucking... People are going to hate, man. There's like, you know, the keyboard warriors and shit like that. Everybody who who is at that upper end of the whatever scale it mm. is. But if we're talking about UFC, there's a whole bunch of haters like fucking paper champ, like oh, w- weak jaw, like shit like that, doing absolutely nothing sitting on their phone, you know. Tall, 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 poppy. Ring. tall poppy is just rife out here though, isn't it too? If, if anyone seems to almost get to that... In inverted commas Too famous yeah. le- Level out here It's like No no We'll bring him back down Like mm. Some of the shit I'm seeing online Now where Like Delta Goodrum For her She's on the The voice The program out here Is just getting Fucking slammed In the press mm. Like See the way she's Carrying on up there And stuff It's like She's on a fucking TV show <laughs> It's like a pageant show Calm the fuck down yeah. Like People just looking To sink the boot in At any any option Like mm. Chappelle's getting it Getting the nod out here At the oh, moment Chappelle her. watch Chappelle twenty four seven. I look care less about her. I, nah, I, it's all anyone. Have saying, we not? Yeah. Have we not moved on? I think yeah. the vast majority of us are talk, talking to people in the work environment today and taking the piss out of like the, the coverage of it completely. Where thirteen years on, no one gives a fuck. Mm. Let, let her settle back in, into civilization out here at thirty nine years old, doing whatever she does. Like. Who gives a fuck what she yeah. does? What it's, she does it's next? It's total non-use. Yeah. Like yeah, I think absolutely. you know, it, we got over it twenty years ago or whatever. It's, like yeah, whatever, it's, it is. She went it in. is just piss weak. Some of the the coverage out here that we see, mm. like yeah, some of these articles that they beat up to are really big on uh, almost taking the piss out of people. With I'm a twenty two year old guy and I've owned ten properties. Like have yeah. you seen a lot of those sort of clickbait articles out here now, and it it'll be like you know he, he saved this on this and he saved this on this. On the back of a fifty fifty five thousand dollar deposit that he got from his uh, from his mum and dad, and yeah. shit. there's always that sort of thing. I, I swear that some of these news sites out here just do that to rile people up and you know, like cause drama. I think there's um, there's a lot to be said about things like that and the flow on effect that they have. Um, like for example, people love to um, compare themselves to each other, mm. and um, whether it be you know, friends, siblings, whatever, and um, like, as you said, you know, you could be like, oh, man, I bought another house or, you know, fuck, I'm so successful. And, yeah, so, so that to me, oh, jeez, you know, I wish I was like that. Yeah, like, I haven't yeah, bought my fuck, own house and then, and then, oh, shit, you know, I have to buy a house. And mm. why? No. What is what is the measure of success? I know it might be going off a different tangent there, but... Um, no, 100%. There, but it's it, valid. In, but in there, and then that's where a lot of, I guess, some of the things that you can be exposed to in through work and stuff is that... Um, mental illness and, and, and the way that, that that affects and can affect people. And, um, yeah, it's it's a big thing. It's, well, it's definitely uh, that you, something that you don't hear about regularly. That comparison thing's a, a, a good one because I was just listening to um, the latest uh, Joe Rogan with Everlast. He's done, like, another, mm. another one with Everlast. And they're talking about this quote, like a Theodore Roosevelt quote in it, that comparison is the thief of joy. And it's like they sort of go into it a fair bit on the podcast. It's definitely worth a listen. That is a good one. Yeah. It's fucking so true, man. Like, and you think about this sort of generation and this paradigm that we're living in where you're like, you know, you're flipping through Instagram at, at work. Say you work in an office, I work in an office and, and I often find myself like skimming through Instagram and it's all of these, you know, beautiful travel destinations yep. and chicks in fucking G-string bikinis on the beach and... Meanwhile, I'm sitting there under fluorescent lights staring at a computer just like hating on my fucking mm. Monday, Tuesday, whatever it may be sort of Wednesday thing. Wednesday, or... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Fill Going in out the... this weekend, boys? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fill in the blank. Yeah. And and like, I mean, I have travelled and I have, I have been to places before and I thought it was really like um, I had to catch myself once in um, – like the the most recent overseas or one of the most recent overseas trips I did was to Colombia and I was in the middle of um, the northern – it's called Tayrona National Park and it's on the northern coastline of, um, of Colombia and I was ho- doing a solo hike like one day in, one day out sort of thing where you basically camp on the beach and just a real like isolated type little mini adventure, you know, and, um, and I fucking thought it was hilarious that – Halfway through this hike that's that's probably like three or four hours long, 
I was sitting there fucking stewing on some argument that I had had with an ex-girlfriend like maybe fucking eight years ago or something like that. Like, And then I just had to like burst out laughing at the time like because there I am like, you know, concerned about my behaviour or like, you know, the, a situation that befell me in, in, you know, like years previously and it's like so far from fucking reality but here i am in this like crazy place experiencing this crazy thing and and meanwhile my mind is is you know like trapped somewhere else and 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 com- mm. and doing the comparison thing of like you know so we it's that whole self sabotage thing we sabotage each other in terms of you know like haters and all that sort of stuff but that comparison thing we do it to ourselves as well which is you know you got to watch out for that big time you need to you run in your own race. That's exactly right. You don't don't measure yourself on anyone else, whether it be fucking belongings, careers, anything. Mm. You need to do do your shit mm. that makes you content. You can't be oh, you know, I got look at him. He just got those new fucking Yeezy joggers, man. Mm. Well, I fucking didn't get those. Oh, I've got nice joggers and I love these, but fuck, they're not that. Like even just petty stuff like that can yeah. just fucking ruin you. Well, like. It's little things that build that build up, mm. isn't it? Um, just got to be. I know it's easy to say, but it's it's um you know it all comes down to those who you have around you and um being able to communicate and just you know take a take a moment and think you know how fortunate have I been you know mm. what I have had what have I done and think fuck you know my life's fantastic mm. yeah take the knocks you know mm. like take the You've got to have the good with the bad yeah if you didn't get the job or you didn't get the girl or like whatever it was mm. like fuck it's it's incidental in the grand scheme of things because fuck how beautiful is life like mm. that we're you know able to do all this different shit so any uh any applications gone in for the fireman calendar for next year big rig <laughs> you reckon <laughs> Only if it's Mr. April, mate. Yeah, yeah. W- <laughs> winter months, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Just, just uh, bulking now. Yeah. They actually are they actually <laughs> no. are they are they actually fireys that are in those calendars? Um, or just a lot of male models. Like, there's some fucking good looking fireys out there. If there is, yeah, like, thanks, fully, yeah. fully politically neutral there. Like, um, <laughs> oh look, oh, I actually recently met um, on a course down here um, a guy who is in the calendar or was in the calendar. Um, Legend bloke, but um, yeah. Outside of that, I think there it's it's a just a it's all different, all sorts. Um, I think there's some uh, airport fireys. Um, there might be which aren't affiliated with like directly with the Queensland Fire Service. Mm-hmm. It's a private company, and then you've got um, auxiliaries, which are part of the Queensland Fire and Emergency Service, which are like uh, casual firefighters, which yeah. you generally find in the more uh, semi-rural areas and. Um, yeah, look, oh, I really don't know anything about it. No. Um, it's a question to get yeah, asked a lot, though. I'd be surprised how many times, you know, um, get asked things like there's There's always three questions I get asked by drunk women who think they're comedians. Yep. <laughs> uh, rescuing the cat from trees, sliding down the poles, and are you in the fire service? <laughs> Cats yeah. out of trees, that's <laughs> fucking gold. Yes, yes, and yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, thanks yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a, there's pulling power to the uniform? Um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and I try not to say that and, and make myself sound like the biggest cock in the world, but uh, hey, it's there's, facts. There's, it's there's, facts. Though many rom- have gone before you, yeah, and uh, it's a romanticised view. Like I, I had an idea about what it would be like before I got in, and um, very happy that it, that wasn't the case. Um, now that I've had a bit of life experience, but um, just wearing yeah. no t-shirt under your overalls around the station <laughs> and shit, like <laughs> so, yeah. smeared some charcoal all just over like the rig, <laughs> like. just doing that <laughs> bit of soot, yeah. just doing the inventory. So, how much <laughs> coconut oil we got? Left? <laughs> <laughs> where's the, where's the thirty kilo kettlebell? Where is it, boys? Is there a, <laughs> there a gym on in the station and stuff? No, do, you, do you have a bit of downtime? We do. Uh, we don't have a gym. At, on station, uh, but we do use one of the gyms and we use the pool in town. Nice. Because hmm. yeah. it's like, uh, how fucking heavy is all the gear you got to carry into like a fully fledged Ooh, fire? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm not really sure. It's, I think it's about oh, 20 something, maybe maybe up to 30. I think it's around, we'll say mid 20s. Sure. Mm-hmm. It's decent. But Throw it's, that in your backpack. But it's the the worst part is the um, is your um, structural gear, which is the. Uh, I guess the stuff that you'd see on telly, and that's the like it. it does, it's great because you can go and you like go into the those situations, I guess, and um, protect you reasonably well. And I think it's 
I don't know, between six and eight hundred degrees, something like that. Wow. So but set- it's, it's it's keeping on the outside, but like you. Your heart's pumping, and mm. you, that's a, there's a real and present danger, I guess, about um, overheating yourself, and because mm. it's keeping it out, but it's keeping it in as well. And so, do you wear like the <clears throat> like the fire retardant stuff? Like they put like a, a like a gel and a bodysuit on you and shit, or that's stuntman stuff? Um, I, I well, not that I've been exposed to. Yeah, but it's um, yeah, we have, we just have our um, uh, I guess our. Uh, the normal uniform mm. that you'd wear, um, well, that we wear day to day, sorry, our station wear, and then um, the bells go, and I guess and you get dressed accordingly, and um, yeah. It's basically sort of bell goes, boys, we've got five minutes tops, and we're out of here oh, sort of no, thing. Oh, no, less all... than that, much yep. less, yeah. It's, yep. um, um, so, Jeremy, okay, the footy's about to finish. Fucking, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> what a, uh, Slater, Slater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, it's... Um, it can be, you know, you could be going for a drive and then you get it over the over the comms or, um, as you say, doing work around the station or whatever it might be and then, yeah, drop everything and... So, uh, situation for you, we're in a, in a house like similar to the studio, get the phone call, boys come out, what's your exact role? What are you assigned to do at the moment? Is there... Um, you have to work your way up to the ranks to hose man sort of thing or you, you start out, you're at the truck flicking switches and like... Uh, What's no, the guy? No, so we got um, generally uh, you'd have a crew of four, uh, but can be a crew of five. Um, so you have an officer, a driver, and then two to three fireys in the back, and that's like myself as a junior firefighter. Tight knit crew, I bet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. becomes a brotherhood sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, um, no word of a lie. And um, uh, depending on what side you sit on the on the pump, generally dictates uh, a role. Yep. Um, I say pump them in the truck, yeah, yeah. and um, uh, so and everyone's got a number, but but anyway, so like you say, something happened here. Then yeah, the beauty of living in a in a built up area like this is it could be a you know oil on the stove or a mm. bit of steam or something like that, and you'd have you could have five to ten trucks turn up. But mm. in the eyes, we've mm. got one one permanent crew always on station. They turn out, pages go off, um, then the you know the the call in crew. Who are on standby? They go in and turn out if they're required, and then you have the auxiliaries, which we have as well. And depending on how big the job is, you might just have all hands on deck. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, beauty about, as I said, about like somewhere like here is that you know that your your backups, you know, a minute under a minute away. Uh, whereas I guess in uh, places like the Isa, it could be anywhere between ten to twenty minutes. Mm. Right, w- which can mean a life in, the, in that sort of instance as well. Yeah, I guess so. That's yeah, it's possible. And when you see shit like, um, I'm sure that you've seen like footage from the the chaos that ensued from like shit like September 11 and stuff like that and you see these, you know, firemen and servicemen of a bunch of different denominations basically just getting like right in the thick of it. Is that, you know, is that sort of in the in the back of your mind somewhere that, you know, like at the end of the day this is quite a quite an extreme occupation and... and you know, you really feel like a, a strong sense of cause behind it that you would you would proper sort of like literally go into the fire, I suppose, in, in like if Yeah, yes you know, and no. I mean um I, I guess I've never I've never been in a situation uh to date that has warranted like fuck this could be it. Mm. Uh which is I guess um a relatable to the other services or I guess the military and things like that. Um but I mean I know what I signed up for, hundred percent. Like this is what my little boy's dream was, you know, mm. to to do to you know to um to do this job, but I'm like I'm under no false presumptions that you know there's a real there's it's clear li- and present it's, it's, danger yeah, like likelihood that I'll, I'll develop P- PTSD at mm. one point um, or that you're going to see something like uh, I guess the worst thing out in Mount Isa is that it is a close knit community reasonably reasonably close knit and that you could. Right, it could be a car smash, it could be anything. Around. Mm. I mean, like it's one of your friends' parents, or it's one of your friend's girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, like that. Um, do they have a? Uh, I'm sure that they do, but have a very good sort of psychology plan in in and around that profession as well. Yeah, it is these days. They've really worked hard to get um, out of going. You know, having an appointment with Doctor Jack Daniels, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, which is oh man, you laugh. It's oh, it, it's no, funny. I just love that analogy. Yeah. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Shout out to Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sponsors. That's, Thanks. that's um, something my, my old my, man would say. Oh, Milo Kunis. Yeah, <laughs> I've got a. Uh, 
I've got an interview with Jack Daniels later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so we, we that they really do push that, um, and that's that's a good thing. And I try and oh, I guess I haven't been exposed to too much, but the exposure that you do have, and it's um, I found it's been very beneficial mm. to, nice. um, to have that support network. Yeah, I mean, you're obviously dealing with some pretty mentally tough cats who you know like sign up for that profession in the first place, and then in your in your spare time, you're fucking <laughs> running the Great Wall and mm. that sort of stuff. So, I mean, props props to the, all the boys and everybody out there, like, sending mm. it, fucking keeping the rest of us middle road folks safe. <laughs> There's a uh, State of Origin week is upon us, Wednesday night. Uh, Mount Isa would be maroon mad yeah, at the minute. Majoritively, yeah. Big Mount Isa, stand the fuck up. Big sports, yeah. big uh, sports culture up there. North Queensland. Go, 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 go Cowboys. Go Cowboys. Go Cowboys. Shout out to all the boys. Is JT going to play or what? I'd, Is this strategy? I don't, I, don't think. I don't think he will if they haven't said anything yet. Jeez, it'd have to be. It's, yeah, it's the ultimate uh, carpet pull from under the yeah. from under their feet. If, if, Fuck you know, with if the Thurston, hard. Thurston runs out with twenty on number 20 on his back, it would be I huge would be, news. But I'd, at this point, I'd... I'd it would be su- it'd be su- it'd be such a such a late switch. Game for, game for two and three mm. wouldn't wouldn't would pass it. For sure. but, um, you know, if he goes out now, he does have a, sh- a shoulder issue at, at thirty four years old. If he goes out and has another one, it could be. This is intended to be Thurston's last State of Origin campaign. So, look, if he does miss game one, he's there for game two and three, to basically try and decide the series. So, how about this one, um, Cooper? Give a cronk. What's he going to do? Is it? Is this going to be, oh, shit, we lost game one? I don't know. Oh. Fight, light a fire under the boys? Yeah, I th- look, the, I've said it on here before, but the two games at Suncorp Stadium for the Maroons, I think, is, is enormous, where mm. the Blues and, and a lot of people that, sort of, that are in the know, and Queen, Queensland love that underdog status, but legit going into this one, everyone's looking at that New South Wales team that they've picked and seen Queensland vulnerable with a few injuries, and mm. they're going... Fuck! If these Blues don't get this series, when are they going to fucking get one? So mm. game game one is so crucial, and we can go. I say we a, a, as a Blues supporter, but if if we are, are to get the ga, uh, get the nod in game one at SunCorp, which a record in recent times in game ones up here has actually been quite good, where we have managed to steal the odd result up here. But to go to game two and then try and win it at home would be massive. But mm. between Cronk and Smith and those guys, like you say. Absolute class acts. So if if they were to lose that game, then you know they they, they just go to New South Wales with that siege mentality in, in the second one. And while they've got that core group of guys, you know there might be little infantry changes here and there. But whilst that calls together, then anything's possible for that footy team. Yeah, I just couldn't help but think maybe because all that speculation around Cooper Cronk because mm. he can't play forever and he's been keeping his cards cards close to his chest. What if you know? He, oh, I cannot see him playing for another team. Mm. That's it. Um, he, has, he hasn't signed anywhere officially yet. It is. It's hard to see a guy play three hundred plus games for one club, mm. and th- and then go somewhere else for for mm. one for one season and play twenty games. It would be it would be different. But no one's no one's put pen to paper for mm, him yet. Exactly. And there isn't a whole world of options out there that can pay this guy a million bucks at this point. It, there's just not that many clubs. There's talk of him going to Newcastle, but you know if he's talking about being in a relationship in Sydney. Newcastle to Sydney is not just fucking around the corner. It's, Surely it's Fox Sports good. will just throw cash at him. Like he's, he's not he an does, idiot. He does already have a, like a, a part-time gig with them when he is mm. free. So I think he's perfect for the media. He's a good-looking cat, well-dressed, well-spoken. Mm. He, he'd fit like a glove into that Fox Sports sort of panel. But uh, I want to see, from, from a marketing point of view, and I, I've used this from the fighter approach as well, and not it's not necessarily trash talk. It's more a promotional side of things. And a lot of the players these days too just seem to toe the company line. Like you can hear dozens of interviews with these players in the lead up. Yeah, you know, team team game, we go out, yep, complete our sets, it's origin footy. Add fucking nauseam, you know. They're saying the same thing each each week in, week out. I want to see someone like David Clemmer or Fafita come out and go, Dylan Napa, that first hit up, I'm going to be there, I'm going to fucking whack him. Well, I'm going to welcome him to State of Origin. Light, 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 light a bit of fires that way directly through yeah. the media to sort of ignite that fuse. I, 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 do, I do think it, yeah. in, in a way it can be missing. Not necessarily like, 
I'm going to come out and do anything illegal or anything, but mm. I'm really looking forward to that personal battle against him. When he's hitting the ball up, I'm going to be there to fucking tackle him. I, I think, think it could really ignite that sort of that theatre and give us more to talk about than just the standard company line of yeah. tough footy. Uh, we've got to play for the 80. Like, yeah, just so, someone think, switch it I up. I think they're two very different animals when you're talking about the fight game versus any other sport yeah. pretty much. Like Because, you know, I, I grew up and I'm sure everybody else can... Te- attest to the fact that you know your your fathers or your coaches or your uncles or whatever tried to instill in you a sense of good sportsmanship and um the likes of Fafita and stuff like that he's not the most uh you know not the most to talk freely (laughs) yeah (laughs) not the most popular for for some of his um some of his sort of brashness and stuff like that so I don't know if it necessarily translates if you if you had somebody that was really good at articulating it, like you're saying, not sort of in a grub way, mm. but to be able to say, you know, with respect, I'm looking forward to this challenge and this That's opponent it, yeah. and c- kind of g it up in that way. But I think the thing you got to remember, man, the is leagueies. we're not talking about brain surgeons here. We're talking about leagueies who are notoriously, um, you know, not known for their media skills mm. and they basically might might sit some sort of media training course where they're given – a list of six or seven oh, cliches that they all fucking say obviously. the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah, obviously, it's a game of yeah, uh, 80 yeah. minutes and, yeah. uh, and obviously had a bad game. Five and tackles and at yeah. a time. We're, and just, <laughs> we're just looking to go out and try and score more points than them. Oh, obviously. It's Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, how obvious is it, boys? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, it's fucking woeful having to listen to those boys sometimes. Yeah. But <laughs> if any of you keen to come on, though, holler at, like, we ain't mad. Like, <laughs> we'll, we'll yeah, Justin come. Hodges, Who, um, shout out. Who's your, who's your pick, Rig? What, uh, you've got a foot firmly in the Maroon camp, but oh, do, do, you, do you think Queensland win the series? Um, I don't know. I don't know, as you say. Um, Get off the fence, mate. Yeah. Get off the fence. <laughs> Nah, yeah, they do. Yeah. Yep. yep, yep, we'll do it. Two games at Suncorp. Yeah, Dan, you w- willing to go on record here with us? The yeah. last episode I'm, before I'm, that. I'm in. Uh, I'm in two tipping comps, and um, and I've never never gone against the no. the Maroons. But um, I, I may like you know if we were if we fuck even then I'm I'm questioning myself. I was going to say if we were two two whitewash games down, I might be inclined to take the points for the third in terms of my tipping comp. But even then, there's probably something. Deep inside me that's like, nah, come on the boys. Yeah, always. <laughs> so I don't know. But um, but yeah, like I said on an earlier early episode, like um the New South Wales side has looked the best that it has in years. And uh I'm I'm interested to see Hayne back in the fold for sure. The last time we saw Hayne playing it at Origin, he was having fucking he but arguably the best footy of his career. So for sure. he cop he cops a lot of hate and a lot of flack. Hayne, and that's that tall poppy that we're talking about as well. Yeah. He's been there. He's and arguably he's um he's not been sort of I don't know right. having the best time up at up at the Titans, yeah. the Titans, and you know he's he's away from his proper home club and and that support and seems a little disengaged potentially, but you know he's just come off a quite an experience himself. So one of those one of those Shout guys to the Hayne one, one of those guys too where. Big players relish that big arena, and I think mm. he, he's in that. He, he's picked out a position at centre. Well, that's that's a questionable one, so I'm really intrigued to see how he goes there. But where he's played a lot of wing and fullback for New mm. South Wales, but I still think he can pick him anywhere and, and he can do a job. He's marks again, he marks Justin O'Neill from the Cowboys come Origin 1. And O'Neill, I've, I had a bit, was drinking a bit of haterade on him last year when, when, when they picked him, but... You know, he really he was he rose to the occasion and didn't look out of place one iota. It was not for me, he's not the most best defensively attacking centre, but he doesn't miss a whole lot in D when when he's on his game. So that that's just mouth watering matchups all all across the field and it's finally here and we can stop talking about it. It's like when we build up to these UFC title fights of the speculation and the passion and the the mind wanders as to what's gonna happen and everyone forms their opinion, but Come at quarter past eight on uh, on Wednesday night, we get to see it come to fruition, and we'll get an idea of where both teams are at. Exactly. Mm. Did you um Did you see the results of the? For, for anyone who doesn't know, there was a UFC at uh, three a.m. this morning mm-hmm. in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. Stop getting lovely place. Another another fucking. Do you know the results, Bruce? I, I do. I, I know the result of the main event. Of mm. the the card itself, I. Look, I'm as passionate about it as anyone else is, but uh, a lot of those names on that card, when you've got a roster 500 deep, there's not uh, not too many other guys that I really knew on that uh, on the prelims and main card. But 
for Gustafson and Teixeira, uh, went five hard rounds from all reports. I've seen the finish. I've seen the combination that he's put together to put Gustafson put uh, Teixeira away with. Decision, and, uh, was it? Uh, no, he knocked him out in the fifth round. Ah, okay. So, like, landed two... Two or three really nice uppercuts. Shit, and Gus is not known for his knockouts, eh? No, no. He put, fucking hit him with three hard shots and this overhand right that he got him with to uh, to put him away was yeah, pretty classy. So And uh, proposed to his missus yeah, Another fucking engagement. Like, love is in the air in the <laughs> UFC, Paddy. It's, uh, there's been three engagements in the last three cards, so... Come up with something original, you fucks. Like, <laughs> and, and the way that he did it too, Gustafsson, he, and he comes across a, gr- a really nice guy in the media and he does really well, but... You know, he's just been f- fighting a guy for t- like 23 and a half minutes mm. in a cage and goes to propose. <laughs> and they've just had a baby. So he's, he's the lo- the crowd's going nuts. He's, he's Stockholm born and bred. So the crowd's <laughs> just going off. I love you. Uh, I love you. And you just had a kid. So uh, will you be my wife? Oh, it's oh like, God. yes. Like, oh, you <laughs> old, you old, fo- yeah, Bryce, you yeah. old, yeah, you old dog, Gustafsson. Playing like, the uh, yeah, so, yeah, translation. That's CTE. Second, yeah. Yeah. English is a second language. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Shotgun yeah. wedding. Uh, may are, uh, maybe, maybe, but good, good for them. May, may happiness rain down upon them. I wouldn't have done it that way myself. <laughs> <laughs> Just one eye. <laughs> I the watched case. this. Um, yeah, there was like a video. Babe. There was a video that went viral like uh, a couple of years back now. But a dude um, that like fucking orchestrated one of the dopest like wedding proposals I've ever seen at the uh, halftime show at a at an N- NBA game. I can't remember which um, which teams were playing, but basically his missus was one of the cheerleaders. And um, so they're playing that. Um, they're doing like their halftime cheerleader show to Bruno Mars. That I think I want to marry yeah, you. Yeah, yep. Mm. And so this dude has obviously like dressed up as the you know the fucking I think it's a bear like mascot for one of the teams or whatever. And he's nah, p- Memphis Grizzlies. Memphis yeah. Grizzlies. There you go. And uh, and so he's part of this big dance routine and stuff like that. And you can see it's a legitimate reaction on this cheerleader's face because she's going through the routine, doing it with all the girls and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden this bear comes along on his like, I think he's wearing roller skates or something, but he basically like whisks her out of the thing and starts dancing with her in this other thing. But everybody else is in on it. So all these other cheerleaders are still in sync and they're jumping off trampolines and there's like... You know, all of this different shit going on, but she's in a chair and she's like, what the fuck is going on? Like, doesn't realize. And then Where's it's security. And then is anyone going to tackle this motherfucker? Yeah. Or? <laughs> and then at the end, boom, like, dude, like, uh, the fucking mascot takes his helmet off and it's old mate and she's just like bawling her eyes out, no, fucking I... said no. But, uh, <laughs> well, no, no, no. She said yes, and he got his yeah. dick sucked. <laughs> Real sloppy, yeah. heaps of lips and shit. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> saved, saved her best for him. Yeah. Right. It's like you got nothing on LeBron, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, well, we, we might leave you there with that sloppy lips. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that real sloppy beach to finish. And, Love uh, mum. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out uh, Mitchelton Madness. Paddy, <laughs> uh, thanks very much for taking some time out of your, uh, your schedule before you head back up to uh, the busy north. Uh, appreciate you coming on It's been a good throwdown You've been a loyal listener of ours So it is good to get you on And listen to your insight First hand uh, sure that Listeners are going to eat it up Appreciate you coming on as a guest We've got A few guests coming on In the near future It seems too actually We've got another uh, Another martial arts contact That we've been uh, That we've been dealing with Who's Done a bit of training At Integrated MMA In Brisbane And uh, a few footy players And potential fighters Coming on as well too So So 10,000 hours baby That's it We're up to We're uh, coming Ten thousand hours, and we're up to about thirty-five. So we're we're <laughs> nearly there, man. <laughs> overnight sensation. It takes five years to be an overnight sensation. Ten. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> be old as fuck. <laughs> I'll be dead by yeah, then, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. Bye for now. Thanks again, Patty. Talk soon, peeps. See ya.